Ron, this is Zola and I'm back like a well-thrown boomerang and today we are going to be tackling Cinema 4D in the last of the introduction to videos uh, like I said this is the fourth one we've done After Effects, Photoshop and Illustrator and this is going to be the last piece in the oddly shaped trinity that is um, what we have been tackling. Um, before we start I'm just going to say that Cinema 4D is an expensive program and if you cannot afford Cinema 4D I would recommend Blender. This program is a, a great little program and it is free. You know, this is uh this is the main <laughs> the main focus of why I'm bringing it to your attention. It's a free 3D program and uh, a lot of the stuff I'm going to cover will probably apply over to it although I can say I've never used Blender. I know people who have and they can as you can see here you can create some pretty amazing stuff with it so um, if you can't afford Cinema 4D don't worry about that and uh, check Blender out. Okay let's go in. Let's hop into Cinema. Now I am in 11.5 um, we are getting 12 this week at work so we're pretty pumped about that but um, I'm hopefully not going to be going into basically Cinema you can get various bundles and with those bundles come more modules and more tools to play with uh, so I'm just going to assume you have the basic bundle and that way I won't be covering anything in this particular video that won't apply to you. If you have any version of the program you should be able to do this, not just 11.5 but um, the older versions, you know, 10.9 hopefully. Um, yeah, the last thing I'd like to say is this will probably be the longest of the introduction to videos. It's not as easy a program to introduce as the others. There are a lot more things to talk about as we have added an extra dimension to our video. <laughs> See what I did there. Yeah. Okay, um, first of all I'd like to say why cinema. Uh, well cinema is... I didn't move over by choice once I bought a Mac. I found out sadly that I could not use 3DS Max which is the program that I had learned at university. And I was um, faced with the option of installing and going via the boot camp uh, kind of direction. But I thought, no, I wasn't really up for boot camping. I, I like the Mac the way it is. And I thought, you know, why not? Let's jump into cinema. It's a program that might have not been as competent in the years uh, gone by. But right now it is catching up so rapidly to um, Max and Maya. And it's just being used by more and more people in the industry. I have to say the huge advantage of cinema over programs like Max or Maya is that it's so much more e easy to use. If you are new to 3D and you open Maya, Maya especially, or Cinema 4D, those programs are made for people who know what they're doing. And they are far less user friendly than um, cinema, which I think I can get you up and running in within about 45 minutes to an hour. So uh, that's why. Um, cinema is not as good as Maya and Max, however I have to say that unless you're going to be creating high-end CGI then you are not really going to need Max or Maya unless you're thinking about going into um, really complex animations and uh, like I said CGI and films and stuff. Uh, cinema 4D is mainly made for motion graphics and that is where the bulk of my work lies so it's been a perfect fit for me. Uh, not to say that if Max didn't come out on Mac, I wouldn't um, go back to it. But uh, right now I'm happy with cinema. And uh, until the day where I cannot kind of do what I want in it, then uh, I'm going to be using it. So, um, yeah, that's en enough with the introduction. Let's get straight into it. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do in the 3D program is obviously make stuff. So I'm going to start up here. And this is the menu where most of the the kind of things that you create or do in the program is controlled. This little bar here, we have a cube, uh, this is a spline, this is um, nerbs, uh, miscellaneous objects, lights, deformers and particles. Uh, I'm going to be going through these one by one. As you can see from the little down arrow, if you can remember from the other introduction to videos, all these have extended kind of um, libraries and if you drag this you can actually break it off and uh, place it around in, in in different parts of the um, program so if I wanted to move that there I could um, 
I actually don't want to do that. Woo, well now. Oh shit. This is this is not cool. Um I'm gonna undock that and close it. Okay, so um as you can see these are primitives and primitives are basic objects. We have tubes, we have landscapes, we have a little puppet. Relief Taurus. I'm gonna start with uh ye good old sphere. As you can see when you make the object, if you have the move tool selected up here, um you can move this on the these are called axes and I'm gonna command Z to undo like in all other programs. Axis is basically a direction and in terms of cinema, as you can see we have a handy little um layout here. This is the Y axis, which is up and down, X and Z or Z. I'm gonna go with Z. And you can move using these handles um things around on this axis. So that's cool. Um Let's have a look at, as you can see I'm moving it right now, let's have a look up here what else we have. This is the scale, as you can see this is now turned into um, little cubes and this basically just allows me to scale my sphere and at the moment obviously it's, if, if you drag in the middle of um, an object you'll see that you can drag on various axes this is gonna scale up on here and here obviously we're using a, a sphere so it's just gonna get bigger or smaller but uh, with a cube these would in fact let's, let's delete this Whoa. and uh, select a cube and um, at the moment we if I come back to my object tool we can um, if you see these little dots here we can scale this in much more interesting ways. Now if we, um, next thing I want to point out is move, scale, rotate, rotate obviously rotates. These bands are obviously once again representative of the different axes on which you can rotate. Um, the sh keyboard shortcuts to remember in this case are E for move, uh, R for rotate and T for scale. Conveniently they're all next to each other on the keyboard unless you are using a French keyboard in which case I would not know. Um, yeah so let's remember that also before we go any further navigating the viewport if I what if I want to rotate around this well if I hold one down and click anywhere you can see I am basically moving the camera around. If I hold two and zoom in and out I can and drag sorry I can zoom in and out and lastly free is to rotate this is a 3d program so you have full control over the um, the view and the angle of your um, sphere or scene should I say okay so um, these are primitives great stuff very exciting you can create platonics which is like a kind of crystal Pyramids figures, which is literally a puppet, which is great for character animation. Uh, now let's go through the. That is one way in which you can start modeling um, the object in which you are aiming for. The other way is to go via a spline. A spline is basically a line. Let's be honest. Um, if you've ever used Photoshop. Um, I'm going to right click here and uh, now I have a viewport representing uh, representing sorry perspective top front right and if I drag here with my spline tool selected you'll see a very very common thing this is basically like using the um, pen tool in, um, in Photoshop and there we go, I have a spline. And as you can see, the spline, just like the um, cube, or everything is represented here. Any, this is basically like um, the timeline in After Effects. Any object you have in your scene will appear here. This content browser down here is an easy way of browsing um, the, the kind of presets and stuff that comes with the program. You probably will not have it down here. Just go down to uh, Content Browser from the Windows and you can use this to navigate um, 
kind of presets that have been made already that ship with the program and you know that's all good and then you can double click and bring them in uh, so I'm going to delete this cube here so as you can see I've made a flat line and you might be thinking you know well Zola that's, that's just a line well uh, the magic with splines happens when we move on to the next menu and um, <clears throat> let's think right what we're going to do is um, instead of creating a random line spline which hasn't been closed I'm going to create a different type of spline which is a text spline now in fact let's make a star and this star as we can see here is just a spline which has been connected and if we move down into our attributes manager which is down here this is like the this basically any object that is selected here all the parameters that can be changed and stuff will always appear down here in the attributes manager um, I think I might close my content browser for now undock close it just to give us some more room to play with and as you can see here we have eight points we can make this more or less let's make a traditional one the plane is the one on which um, it appears I'm gonna leave it on XY and let's go back to our uh, let's use extrude nerves now we now have an object and a spline and you might be thinking well nothing's happening here what happens is if you drag your spline until you see the little down arrow and suddenly voila that's French um, we have created a, an object from our spline this is classed as a, a NURBS object if you might see it. NURBS 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 is stands for an incredibly catchy phrase which is um, non-uniform rational B spline I think uh, yeah I won't be using that one at parties but that is a piece of knowledge that you may wish to throw out there when you're trying to impress your friends if friends are uh, impressed by pointless acronym size um, so we now have made an object out of this spline and just to show you like I said that object does nothing without a connected spline. I'm going to use a profile here. We have an eye and drop that into the object and once again we've created an object from it. So as you can see here if I hit command R or control R on the Mac we can have a look at what our object will look like in 3D and right now it looks very basic as you would expect because it is has a default texture on it which is this grayish texture. We have an auto light which is a light coming straight from the camera and it looks pretty pretty dull really um, there are so many different types of I'm gonna create um, another spline here and I'm gonna show you something another one of these tools basically I'm gonna create a kind of vase from the side Whoa. one thing to be aware of I'm just going to leave that at that. This is not the right way to do it. But if I drop this spline, let's go back into here. We'll use a lathe nerves. And we've now created. Basically, if you imagine that spline is uh, the profile of uh, what a vase would look like. And as you can see, we've created a, a whole vase here. In fact, it's way too ugly to be a vase. Maybe more like a goblet yeah that's the lathe nerves um, we have if we make a circle and um, I don't know maybe a helix uh, dr move the helix further down by dragging the arrow with the move tool selected once again let's go in here and make a sweep nerves which is great because it, it actually extrudes one kind of um, shape along another one one spline along another spline which might be confusing so I'm gonna drag one in and drag the other in and um, the first one is the one that will be used to uh, create the shape and the second one will be the path as you can see here at the moment this looks like a kind of seashell 